Hello, my name is Jan Przysizniak. I'm a tinkerer. I like building pedal-powered devices. I've built several pedal-powered generators and a grain mill and a few other things. And uh, I use scavenged, reused, recycled materials. A community organizer named Rocky Ferro has asked me to build a pedal-powered garden scrap chopper for the Riverdale Community Garden. She has asked that this mulcher be operable by kids, so it needs to be efficient and easy. Uh, possibly it can be scaled up to include several riders. And it needs to be safe, obviously, for anyone. And it needs to uh, deal with anything a garden will throw at it, so sunflower stalks, corn stalks, potato, tomato, bean stalks, wet things, green things, dry things, squishy things. All this stuff has to go through it without tangling the mechanism. And that's what I've been focusing on for the last several months, uh, is to build a proper chopping mechanism, which is not unlike tree loppers, but going around in a circle, and also very sharp. Um, so this is the first step in this contraption building, the chopping mechanism, and that's what I'm going to show you today in this video. Later on, I will build a pedal-powered drive that will drive this mechanism and make it safe. And uh, beyond that, I will add pedal drives to include several riders and make it a team effort. Now, I've never built this particular kind of device before, so there's a fair bit of figuring things out. So let me take you on this journey, and let's get started. So first I spent some time madly scribbling and drawing. And then to help me think things through, I built a working model out of a bicycle crank, which I turned into its spider and its hub. Modified a pedal to become a handle. And this all came together uh, to help me uh, work through some ideas. And I realized quickly that the spider arms would be too flimsy to serve as blades. So I was going to beef them up with some scavenged steel. So first I made a one side spinning blade, which will run against a fixed blade hold, held between those two points I'm indicating. And then I realized that single blade was unbalanced, it didn't, wasn't braced well, so I went for a two-ended blade. And I started over with a new crank, from which I extracted another spider. This I ran through the lathe to uh, cut it down to size and later on to add some threading to it so it would hold things together. And this fit nice and snugly into the new two-ended spinning blade that I had put together. Here I'm cutting some fittings um, to go into the lathe and to serve to hold everything together. And here are all those shiny parts that I came up with. So the bushings and lock rings, the support post and spider, the fixed blade with two holes and spinning blade with one. And this is how they fit together. Now their surfaces were still rough and I needed to smooth them out with a fly cutter attached to my lathe. But the lathe is too small to go through everything in one pass and they were still rough and I needed to sand them down. So a friend of mine, Fabian Jennings, made me a sanding board and I made myself a shuttle that would hold the blade loosely and used some coarse sandpaper. There were a lot of problems with the blade ending up convex um, because of slight rocking in the shuttle and slight rocking in the blade as well. Also, there was some uneven wear in the sandpaper, so I ended up putting solid anchor screws holding the blade to the shuttle. And then I added adjustable casters that helped level the shuttle to the nearest thousandth of an inch. And finally I changed the surface of the sandpaper. I raised it up slightly in the middle so that part was the only one touching the blade and it was wearing evenly. And these are the adjustments. Each mark there is for one thousandth of an inch. And finally after 10,000 strokes on each side all that effort paid off and I had a flat, smooth, parallel plate. I had two of them, in fact, that ran against each other without gaps or tight spots. Now to shape them like loppers, 
I uh, went through a few designs. And obviously I ended up with the last one being my favorite, which I attached with two-sided tape to the metal blades. Then I hacked off the excess metal with the hacksaw and then ground off the rest with the grinder and a hand file. Took some burrs off also and revealed the shaped blades. They look lovely and they cut paper very nicely as you'll soon see. There we go. But to be more than scissors and more like a knife, um, I needed to give them a bevel, uh, more of a wedge shape, and I hacked that off and ground that off and filed that off and finally sanded it flat uh, using a beveling jig that I built that sets the primary bevel at 20 degrees. And I went through a gradation of different sandpaper grits to get a smooth finish on the primary bevel. But now I needed to give it a secondary bevel. After having polished it, I raised the jig and uh, put a 35 degree secondary bevel on the edge of the blade to make it tougher and longer wearing. And here it is. Now I'm smoothing out the fixed blade. And here's the testing. First the paper and then all the garden scraps. Twigs. and some fava bean stem, some kale stem, some dill root, and then the crown's quite tough, but also these blades are still not heat hardened. They will be, and once they are, I can sharpen them to a much finer edge, and they will cut much better, especially when there's pedal power and a flywheel behind them. Here's some corn stalk. And this rag is standing in for the wet, squishy things that I mentioned earlier. And here we are with compostable mulch, which is the desired product. So the next step is to put together a pedal drive uh, that will contain a flywheel to help things along. Thanks for watching.